everybody, welcome back to Wrenched. I'm Travis, this is Kevin. Today we're going to be showing you how to install dual calipers on a Mustang. Justin Pollock's CNC aluminum brackets. We're going to be putting this on here along with stock calipers and stock rotors. So this is the easiest way that you can put dual calipers on your Mustang. Yeah! Okay, so you guys right remember the Bronco from the Gambler video. Well, update on what's been happening since then. Yeah, we blew a head gasket on it. Don't so, say, don't say we. I, I blew a head gasket on it, probably on the way back from the Gambler, uh, but then it really blew up when we took it to the beach house. So uh, heads are actually done on it at the machine shop. We'll be getting that back. This probably should have been a video, but I wanted to get it done quickly, so I went ahead and knocked it out one day with no camera. So oh well, you guys, most of y'all didn't want to see that anyway. So get this thing done, and uh, actually it'll probably be up for sale afterwards. But next, we needed a tow rig. We got one. It is a 95 F350 Dually with a 7.3 turbo. We had to do a lot of work to it to get it running too. We didn't film it, it was just boring stuff. But it runs and drives now, and this will be what we tow the trailer with. Painting the calipers and the caliper brackets because, I mean, you have them off, you might as well make them look good, spend the extra time. First, we wire wheeled them, cleaned them all up, uh, wiped them off, took all the hardware out, and now we're just going to send some paint. So, if you guys need a setup for painting, kind of hard to beat a ladder with a board hanging out of it, then you just zip tie to it and you're good to go. Painted so much stuff like this. Then you don't have to touch it or wait for it to dry to flip it over. You can literally hit all angles. So step one, we gotta take this pan hard bar off. It's in the way of the diff cover, which we have to drain in order to pull the axles. So let's get this removed. It's an 18 millimeter. So now the pan hard bar is out of the way, we're gonna take the diff cover off, drain the axles. It's a half inch socket. Got a nice clean pan here because I'm gonna be reusing this fluid. It's, uh, it's really expensive fluid, so put it in a clean pan and then uh, put it back in when we're done. You're smelling diff fluid. It smells, yeah. like, it smells like propane. That's one of those satisfying sounds. Mm -hmm. So in order to push the axles in to get the C-clips out, we gotta take the caliper off first. I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt. It's a 15 millimeter. If you have a ratcheting wrench, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. Uh, socket and ratchet won't fit back there. Yeah. Brake pads. Oh God, those are low. Well, the backside's super low. <sighs> So I wasn't expecting that on the back side. It's a lot lower than I thought they'd be. The front side looks fine. Find some peace tonight in the arms of yeah, probably gonna need to go ahead and do another set of pads on this. Ugh. On the caliper, everyone will tell you not to let it hang. As long as you're not yanking on it, it's fine. And plus it's got the uh, Parking brake cable going to it, so you're not gonna damage anything. You're probably gonna go ahead and get a new set of rotors too. These just eyeballing, probably a little thinner than they should be. Before you can take out the C clips, you gotta take out the big pen that runs through here. In order to remove it, there's an eight mil bolt right here. But you gotta smack loose. Find some peace tonight. This is super fun. So this bolt that we were just undoing here, it's really common for these to snap. Uh, I definitely probably could have done it more gently with the wrench, but it probably still would have broke anyways because it's just something that these do. And the only real way to get it out that we have seen is to drill into the big pin and use a screwdriver to pop this bad boy out. I try to magnet and stuff, that doesn't work. So drilled into here, 
got this out, so I'll be able to keep working. I'm just gonna have to buy a new one of these and a new one of those tomorrow. This thing really hates to focus when you zoom. <laughs> uh, if you want a more detailed description on how to do that, if your bolt breaks off, uh, just search on YouTube. There's there's a few videos. Outski, got it. All right. Boom. So now with that C-clip out of the axle, go ahead and slide it out. Now we can remove the dust shield bolts, pull off the actual bracket we need to remove. How much fun did you just have? Here she comes to wreck the day. <laughs> I just said, I was like, oh, she was I was like, Monica's gonna come out here right when they start filming. <laughs> Did you get Kishi? No, I uh, got better than that. You guys want to see who's ruining our shots right now? That's me. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Look at this. Hi. <laughs> Look at this. Hi. 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 Hi.
we're now on day three of this project because we got to the point where we needed to put the calipers on and they didn't come compressed. So in order to compress these, you have to use a tool like this, which we didn't have with us. It was at Travis's work. So I had to wait for him to get it in order for us to be able to keep going. Uh, we tried the old plier method where you stick it in and push and rotate. It's just not enough force on this style of caliper to get it in. So we're gonna do it the right way and finish this up today. That ought to be good. So we'll go ahead and get these uh, brake pads loaded in and we'll go ahead and mount them on the car. After trying multiple lubricants and some heat, uh, this one ended up snapping off in there. Uh, these things are really, really rusted. So I wasn't expecting that on the back side. It's a lot lower than I thought they'd be. The front side looks fine. AutoZone luckily says they have it in stock, so I'm gonna go take this as a core and go get me a new one. All right, made it back from AutoZone. They had the bracket in stock along with the slide pins. So I'm going to grease everything and bolt this on and then uh, I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. One week later. It's never synchronized. Sorry guys, we did not film the end of this. Uh, we're in a time crunch. Uh, round one is now three days away. Uh, so we kind of just did it to get it done. But Kevin's going to explain to you what we did. What the? <laughs> <laughs> so as far as putting all this back on, it uh, you've got the two 15 mil bolts that hold this side on, and it's literally the same as this, except for uh, if you get in here. These bolts right here uh, on the stock side, they don't come with the kit. You, know, you only get the two for the new side, and that is this particular kit. And what happens is they end up being really close to the rotor. You could probably get away without shortening them, but I wasn't comfortable with how close they were to the rotor, so I went ahead and cut them down a couple threads. Other than that, bolt them on, and then if you come down here, uh, we installed the fittings on both sides. I'm not gonna go into the fittings too much. The ones that I bought originally based off the Chris Fix video were not correct. They're just not for this car at all. Uh, I bought some other ones that match the actual threading is on this. You'll see all the hydro stuff in the next video. Uh, there's really not much else to it than that. I'm sorry I didn't film it for you. I hope that you got what you needed out of this video. And thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next one.